All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Derek, and I'm the artistic director of uh, Sightlines Entertainment, as well as the producer for the 2016 production of Lord of Flies. And uh, we're doing a series of chats with uh, our different groups of people in the company uh, because we are going to be premiering the 2016 production of Lord of the Flies really, really soon on YouTube. And so today we have with us our actors, some of the actors of Lord of the Flies. In fact, actually, uh, all of them are part of the Ralph team or the Ralph, Ralph gang. And so uh, before we begin uh, today's chat, we're just going to get them to introduce themselves and uh, share what role they play in Lord of the Flies. Take it away. Hello, everybody. My name is Gafe Akbar, and I play, I play Ralph. Hi, I'm uh, Lim K. Su, and I play Piggy. Hi, I'm Erwin Cha Ismail. I play Simon. Hi, I'm Crispian Chan, and I play the role of Percival. And I'm Samantha Scott Blackhall, and I played the role of the director. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so Samantha is joining us today also. She's the director of Lord of the Flies, as well as the artistic director of Blank Space Theatre. And uh, before we actually, uh, you know, continue to talk about the show and reminisce the good old days, uh, I thought uh, what I want to do is uh, share with everyone and also for the actors uh, uh, our trailer of Lord of the Flies so that um, we can all recap and go back to the good old days of 2016 and also go back to the uh, jungle that we have all <laughs> built ourselves and turned and transformed the Soda Theatre uh, studio into. So without further ado, let me just... All right. Ooh. Oops. Okay, here we go. Uh, oh, oh, wow. Hi, my name is Samantha Scott Blackhall. I am the director of Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies is based on a book by William Golding and adapted to stage by Nigel Williams. Uh, the premise of the play is that a plane carrying a bunch of school boys um, on a trip somewhere crashes on a deserted island and on this deserted island these kids have to survive until they are rescued. Hello, my name is Gafe Akpa and I play Ralph. I'm Lim Kei Siu playing Piggy. And I'm Erwin Cha Ismail, I play Simon. So Ralph sort of becomes uh, the, the leader that gets appointed by the group. Piggy is Ralph's friend, uh, they make friends very early and Piggy is smart and he's logical but he's weak. Well, Simon is, is physically frail, somewhat shy, but uh, he's known to many uh, as someone that's good natured. Well, the most exciting part about this play is that we are transforming the Sota Studio Theatre into a jungle because it's set on a deserted island, on a beach, in the jungle, on a cliff. Lord of the Flies is dark, it's funny, it's tragic, it's hilarious. The experience is really immersive, so it's just something you don't want to miss. So please join us at Lord of the Flies opening 25th of March and runs through 3rd of April at the SOTA Studio Theatre. So don't forget to get your tickets at ptix.com. See you there. See ya. <laughs> there you go. So right. dramatic. No social distancing back then. <laughs> 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 so, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's four years now, but I think before we, we even talk a little bit more of the, 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 the play and, 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 you know, all the questions that, 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 that uh, we're going to be asking you guys, um, I just want to share that this production, we actually had, I think, started discussion with Sam in 20, as early as 2015. And I think we spent really, really a long time trying to just cast and, and bring the entire team together because you know there, there's so many uh um kind of um things that we have to consider and the the, the age, oh not the age group but you know just just the pairing and stuff like that so the, before uh you know we talk about the play itself my question that i want to actually ask uh our actors here is uh, what is the biggest thing that drew you to lot of or lot of the flies and that led you to say yes to being part of this production anyone um, uh, sure. Oh, go ahead, Well, I guess for me, um, it, it's a great deal because uh, it, it, it's. I've had the 
should I say, I, I was lucky to be able to have that text for my O levels uh, when I was in secondary three and secondary four. And uh, as soon as Derek told me about uh, putting up the show, I was like, oh my gosh, I would come full circle with it. By full circle, I mean, I, it, it kind of, I think that was the show that I think, or rather I recall I wanted to be an actor because uh, it was the first time I had um, some form of um, experience working or doing scene work um, when I was in secondary three. We were just, you know, at the assembly hall. And I, I think, I, I can't remember if I played Ralph or Jack. Um, and, and, and yeah, that, that just stuck with me. Uh, and then, so that would have been, I'm really bad with uh, mathematics. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know how many years ago. So, like, maybe, that's, yeah. So, 10 years later-ish, I, I, when you asked me to do the show, I was like, oh, yes, please. Count me in. And, uh, and yeah, I had a great time, especially with the cast like this. I, I think I was cheeky. I was like, well, who else have you, have you cast for the show? I was like, oh, yeah, 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 come in. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think, thank, I, thank, I, I, thank, thank you, Owen. Yes. I think for me, I didn't, I wasn't, sorry, Crispy, do you want to go, go first? Go, 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 okay. go, go, go. I wasn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't study this novel. I think I had, I must have read it or read a, a version of it when I was young and, kind of was aware of it and was aware of the the premise. And uh, I think just growing up too, I was very, I always gravitate towards stories that are, that revolves around, you know, like, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, people growing up or uh, not up and coming. Um, what's the coming of age. A coming of age. Thank you. Uh, stories about, you know, people coming of age and, uh, and the trials and tribulations around that. So I think, um, uh, and at that point, I hadn't, I had only worked in Singapore for like a year. And then I got a call from Sam to come and have a meeting. She wanted to discuss about a show that she wanted to do. And then, uh, yeah. And I think what really sold me was just her enthusiasm of the show. Yeah. Uh, I remember we were sitting in Yakun, maybe, uh, in, at the Esplanade. Uh, and, uh, yeah. yeah, over breakfast, because I think I had to go to rehearsal or do a show or something yeah. after that. And, uh, and I just remember her enthusiasm of trying to piece, trying to assemble this um, people that she's going to throw on an island together. Um, and uh, I can't remember the names that she she mentioned, who she, at that point had already been cast in the show. But the excitement, I think, of doing uh, an adaptation of a novel was one, an adaptation of a novel that is about uh, a, a con content or themes that I enjoyed. And um, the possibility of playing Ralph, I think those three things were quite attractive package. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I read the I read the novel, I sort of studied it at school when I was 14. And I was actually in wow. an English boarding school when, when I was 14 years old. So wow. it was very felt very close to the material, you know, and being that kind of age as well. So, you know, we were kind of taught that it wasn't so much a condemnation of humanity, but a warning of the dark side that humanity can go to. Like. But uh, it was so interesting because I get this call when I'm 60 years old, <laughs> a 14 year old, biggie as well. And I, you know, I, I used to be a very fat boy when I was young, but I wasn't fat anymore. So I was very interested in why Sam wanted to cast me as biggie. I found that really interesting. And then when I went to talk to her, she said she wanted me to be much more, possibly the only character who was very Singaporean in the cast. So I found that very interesting. So I was already very interested because of that. Yeah. I had heard also that Sam had tried to put on the production before and there were problems with injury. So that was uh, in the back of my mind as well. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And uh, Christian, what, what, what about, what about you? Um, my, mine's very similar to maybe Guffier's three points. Um, I mean, um, I also studied it at school, um, but I remember I, I remember some of the book, but I remember more vividly the 1963 film, mm. the black and white film that was made. And um, you know, for I think I think I was 14 years old when I was when I was studying that story, that book, mm. and to watch a film, watching these kids. Uh, kind of go through the experiences that they did back in that time. And, and also for me to be fascinated to watch a film that was made that long ago to see the kind of um, 
the, the relationships and, you know, how the story turned out, it was very fascinating for me. I remember that being very something that stuck in my mind a lot and made me very, it made me remember what is one of those few books and novels that I remember very vividly, you know, after school um, finished. Um, secondly, I think, um, you know, I've always loved working with Samantha and, uh, you know, any time I could get a chance with Samantha, um, it's always, because I've worked with her since I first started at drama school and it's always great working with Samantha. Um, she always brings a very dynamic kind of, um, I love her set designs. I love the set, the production values of her show, <laughs> cin- cinematic vibe to her work and I think that's what I was really looking forward to exploring with Lord the Flies, what what she would bring. And I'm and I'm always drawn to ensemble work. And um, um I think actually funnily enough, most of the work that I've done in Singapore has been most, mostly ensemble work. And there is something about that, that camaraderie that that a group of lads, for example, in this one, um, um, it's always a very exciting kind of dynamic to play with. With, um, with these ensemble kind of shows, and that was another draw card for me. Mm. Awesome. And, and, and also for Samantha, what, what was your, you know, what was your, of course, of course we, we talk a lot about, you know, the, 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 the staging of this and the casting of it, but, but how was your experience? Like, what was your process like, uh, you know, it, it, when, when you were like auditioning or casting for these actors? Um, well, I was going to say first that I absolutely enjoy working with men on shows not to say okay because there'll be a lot of women who are very upset when I say that (laughs) but it's a completely different process because when you work with women there's a lot of talking it's very emotional um and there's a lot of talking (laughs) whereas with guys you know it's like it's physical you just do it you just try it you don't talk too much about it um, and you kind of just work it out on the ground and rough it up, you know what I mean? So I love that, and I was excited to um, kind of get the team together. It felt like, you know, what kind of, what's my sports team going to look like, and can they play well together, and you know what I mean? Like, it's just a different, it's a different process. So, um, yeah, it was a, it was really thinking about the dynamics of actors and how that would work um for us uh in in an ensemble like this especially one that's so physical mm. so um yeah and i've just you know i've wanted to work with um everyone in the cast uh crispy and i had worked with in school like we did one of his was it graduation or one of the last one of the last shows or something i, can't, I mean it was a great yeah yeah, and we so I mean I'd been wanting to work with him. Love see I love seeing uh, Gafia on stage. I was like, gosh, I mean it would ju- would just be a dream. Um, Case you I hadn't worked with all this time, but knew well from the industry, and I was just like, gosh, this this could be a really great opportunity. And Erwin, we hadn't worked together either, had we? So it was like for me, it was a lot of it was um, an exciting prospect to work with actors I hadn't worked with. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, it, yeah, it, it was, it was a dream for me. Yeah. Likewise, likewise, uh, you know, producing Law of the Vice has always been the dream also. So like, oh, and I studied that, that text for all levels too. So the literature, yeah. The literature, yeah. So, uh, it, it was 14 years ago because, uh, 2002 was was all over your work, same batch. So that's why you're a businessman and I can't do math. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so it's you know it's, it's such a very special play 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 to me also. So you know, and and but talking about um um what Samantha talk, uh, was talking about in terms of you know uh, working with men and and just being so physical and and and, and you know just get going on the floor and playing. You know, you guys have to play kids, right? Age from nine to sixteen, your characters and 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 Crispin, you're the youngest. You're playing the youngest boy, the little one in the play, Percival. What did you guys do to prepare for your role? <laughs> Crispy and honest, you go in, but since <laughs> you play the youngest boy in the play. Oh, I do. I look to be honest, I didn't do I didn't do too much research. I just kind of just Just sat back and watched Rizman. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. It's just another Friday night for me, really, folks. It's just another Friday night. You know, you have a couple of whiskeys and then next thing you know, you're, you're bubbling like a five, six-year-old and uh, and you, you lose a certain level of coordination. I, know. I, don't, I think, I think, I, think, I, think um, I mean, Percival was an interesting character because, you know, in amongst all these... Uh, uh, it, 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 it's, it's a terrible ordeal what these young boys go through on this island and you know, how the story kind of develops. And I think um, trying to find, um, with Percival, is really just trying to find that kind of um, innocence that he carries through it. Um, because in some ways, when Percival talks about seeing the monster for the first time, um, that triggers the kind of the events after that. And so there is this kind of naivety and innocence that Percival has. And I think that um, where did that come from, I know we, we, we are all naive in some ways about our assumptions. You know, we see things and we interpret that. It's the empower of imagination and, and tapping into that, that kind of un, unbridled, um, you know, believability, no matter what it is that you believe that what you saw is what you saw, which I think we kind of are familiar with right now in the current situation, you know, what we, that kind of naive gullibility that comes from, I think that's really kind of what is the first and foremost thing that you tap in with Percival. Um, but yeah, I guess that's it, that innocence. Mm. Yeah. What about you, Casey? What about? Yeah, uh, it's so interesting because Piggy was very specific yeah. because the name yeah. is because he's fat and I wasn't fat at that stage. As I said, I was obese as a kid, but I wasn't fat. So uh, the only thing I planned in advance was thinking about that Piggy name. And I used to have a really bad sinus problem when I was young. It kind of disappeared actually. But so I just came up with this kind of device, I guess, that, that he had this sinus problem and he was always and that would have the pig face kind of thing, you know. So that's the only thing I thought I might do. But then I thought I wouldn't plan too much because this is such an ensemble piece. And playing mm -hmm. those young people, those teenagers or pre-teenagers, would depend on what everybody else was doing. And, and I was sort of in the middle, there are older and taller boys and all that kind of thing. So I thought I'd just be very open to see what everybody else was doing and then find my place within that. And I think that it turned out most of us did it that way, actually. Yeah. You know, we try to play really young. Is oh, we're going that young. Yeah. You know, we kind of adjust it with each other. Yeah, there was, there was. I think also for me, likewise, there there was a tendency, or at least for me, that I played it too young. I guess it was kind of easier to fall in that. I don't know, four, five, six age group, and but but the boys weren't that young. But I guess it's kind of the process to you know to find it and and. And a big part of me was actually a lot of memory memory recall just uh, during my you know pre teenage years the choices I made because I, I think generally when we grow up you know you, you don't want to be the well for instance you want to be the cool kid and and what that embodied was was you know or what you experienced at the time was something I you know I still remember but for because I was playing Simon I mean he's not trying to be the cool kid it was like different. Just, there's also that sense of maturity in Simon, um, which, you know, I had to put that layer on and, and stuff like that. And of course, there's the whole um, uh, physicality to it, which, you know, we, we all try to, uh, um, uh, should I say, uh, put on um, or rather embody. Um, but I think I also had the help of my nephew, because I had a I had a eight nine year old nephew, and so I was like, ah, oh, what what were the choices he would make, kind of thing. So that was one of the things that I think helped me uh, fuel my character. Yeah, I think similarly, I feel um, the idea of innocence I think was quite um, important. I think for 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 Ralph, um, I didn't I don't remember I don't recall sort of doing that much research in terms of physicality of like what what embodying it. A younger person would be like. I felt that you know when you're young, the the way you look at the world is a little different. The lens of which you yeah. filter and consume what you observe is a lot different from how I would now, you know, as an as an adult. So, and I and to to look at the play and to look at the characters in the play and the 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 uh, situation of the play with through the lens of a I can't remember how old they were, 16, 15? 
yeah. about that. Yeah. And and not through sort of like Gaffey's judgmental adult eye uh, lens. So that was that was hard, I think. Um, uh, what I liked about the play too, um, I guess when people watch it, is that the opening of the play starts with Ralph comes out and then he he sees the sun. He looks at the sun and he looks at the beach and sort of understand the environment that he's in. And uh, and the way Sam's directed it too is that it's not, it's it's complex, but it's not um, that much of fear or or or. or doubt it's quite exciting it's how young people suddenly find themselves without any adults that's quite exciting and i think that's sort of the lens that that ralph sees the world to begin with and then of course it sort of spirals from there i think i feel that's that's the, the the point of view that i had going into the play playing somebody younger and also shaving Shaving yeah. helps you look younger <laughs> and feel younger <laughs> thank you thank you for sharing and, and I- um, and, and actually on that note, Sam, you actually uh, organized something, right, for, 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 for the cast to have an yes. activity. You, you want to share a little bit of, about Yes, because do you remember we, play, we had Andy Tia organize that soccer game? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and we played God. with the kids um, <laughs> just to kind of like get a sense of when, when they're not being watched, you know, because that's always awkward, how they moved you know how they interacted then we sort of saw natural leaders mm. and then natural followers and stuff do you remember that oh yeah absolutely yeah. And, it, and it rained on the second half Probably. of that game that's right so <laughs> I, I, re- I remember seeing a lot of us just like at the corner and just like, <laughs> <laughs> just like <laughs> hyperventilating <laughs> and trying to figure out how can we win this game <laughs> oh. I think if anything, it did the opposite. Rather than trying to feel young, I think it made it really feel our age. Actually, <laughs> yeah. it was exhausting. <laughs> Wet. Yeah. yeah. Did, did we did we pair up with kids? I can't remember. Like we did. did we do? It was a fifty-fifty. I think. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That was fun. I, I remember it stormed horribly. Yeah, and, uh, you know all that mud and all the you know all of that. It's kind of perfect. Yeah, it's it, it's a perfect fit for, for for that. But you know, it then it reminds me of another time that we all got together with mud, and that was our photo shoot. And I think that's that that you know uh, Sam was directing. And Sam, you want to share that a little bit while I prepare the the the, the photos that I was. Oh, good, good. Show photos. Yeah. So. So um, for me, it was important for the photo shoot to kind of get out there and rough it. And um, uh, along with uh, Mike Weed, a photographer, we went and recceed places where we could potentially have it. And of course, more jungly, the better. Um, and uh, I, yeah, I remember that day was a lot of mud and blood. Um, and mud. Ugh. And mozzies and lots of mozzies and yeah and really and we were being cut by l- the grass and like it was yeah it was it was messy. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a shame we missed out on this one because I I think I couldn't I couldn't do the shoot. That's right. Yes, I think you had I think you had a show on or something. Right? I think I was I was doing a show that day and yeah. I, just, I just missed out on the fun on the mozzie and the muddy fun. Yeah, look at the dirt that you missed out on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's real fear, there, Gaffia. Real fear. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Oh. Oh, Piggy. Great wedding. That was the first day that we had the conch. I remember. Yes. Yeah. There you go. The there you go. Nice. That's right. Oh, these shots are Roger. great. They were great, yeah. Wow. Well, for our viewers, this is Rizman, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. No, this is Manic. This is Manic Django. It's Manic not- <laughs> Django, sorry. <laughs> and the twins. Look at the, oh, they really got into it and they were hating it while they do it. Like, yeah. oh no, we don't want to put this mud on. And then they were just putting more and more. <laughs> and it was like, you guys can stop. No, we got to put on the mud. But I remember there, was, there wasn't there was ample supply of clean mud. 
because uh, I think like the makeup artist had like just a certain amount, and then the number of um, mud that needed to make us look good um, made you us. You guys were like good. rolling on the ground, and we, stuff. yeah, we we dug deep, literally. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's a good one. What a great shot! Yeah, next team. Yes, and um, look at that team, Fia. I love this shot. Wow. Oh, I love this. Yeah. Wow. yeah, I remember the photographer was down in like some longkang. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He was like covered in mud too and yeah. then shooting up. Um, yeah, yeah. And the, and the sky was getting pretty. It was actually very hot to start with, wasn't it? Yeah. And we were all just sweating buckets. And then we played an exercise where you guys had to go into the jungle to find the conch. Yeah. yeah. That was crazy. That was the yeah. treasure hunt, right? After the, yeah. the treasure that hunt. That was right next to Woodley, Woodley MRT. Yes. yes. Was oh. it an old cemetery? The old cemetery, Bidari, yeah. Bidari, 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 Bidari cemetery. Know where I live. Bidari, now you know where I live. <laughs> I think that's all we turn into HTV now, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Sen Senate Avenue or Senate uh, no, sorry, Alcaf uh, Avenue. Oh, I don't know uh, what it's called. But yes, yeah, that afternoon was quite. If you look, uh, if you re if you go to the area and look, you could still find the conch. <laughs> oh, really? No, no, <laughs> no. No, I remember that, no. that. It was a very interesting day because it was a full day. Because by the time we finished the shoot, and then we had all gotten clean up, and you know, like a bunch of wipes just to get rid of it, and then um, and then Sam comes around and is like, "Oh, you're not done yet." Uh, I've hidden the conch. <laughs> now break into two groups, Team Ralph and Team Jack. Whoever finds it first wins. Um, I think it took us, I, th I think you you thought it was going to be easy to find, but we're talking about like waist high grass. God knows what lives in there. Uh, <laughs> and we were like going to town. We were like gardeners, you know, <laughs> mowing the lawn, thinking that it was like deep. And then Sam was in the, in the, in the distance going like, warm. Warm, cold, <laughs> and it took us a good hour um, or so hours, I think. Yeah, we didn't come back, is it? After that, you realized. <laughs> Did and we then, find it? I, mean, I found it. Nice. Yeah. Wow. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually, uh, 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 Sue and I found it. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I told Sue, you take this. I, I, we played some manipulation game <laughs> so that we can take it away from the tree where we found it. That's right. And then, I don't know, there was some manipulation going on. Subterfuge yeah, yeah. <laughs> and manipulation. Yeah. What was interesting was that we were, at one point, we were clearly two separate groups. And then we just got tired. People started bailing and just like hung out by the, by the, by the um, rest area. <laughs> and, uh, and then at one point, the groups decided to like, work together at one yes. point and then yes. they started to backstab each other it was very <laughs> it was very lord of the flies yeah, it was. Um, but the exhilaration of finding it um and getting to go home was second to none <laughs> well, maybe the reunion should we should do that sam we should all bring them back <laughs> to hunt for the conch right oh. <laughs> yes right Sure. Maybe we just hide it in Owen's house since it's near the place. Um, you know, and then have a meal after that. Yes. Easier, please. <laughs> so on that note, what was your greatest challenge, your biggest challenge uh, for all of you? Um, it doesn't have to be uh, acting per se, but, but just being in lock slides. What was your greatest challenge for you? Hmm. I... Go for it, Ali. Got me. It's like okay. No, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to think. Um, I think one of the, I would uh, well, maybe it's an acting thing, but I remember. Well, am I spoiling it if I say that Simon dies? <laughs> no. Um, I think when 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 uh, after Simon's death, I, I'm basically lying on stage for I don't know the whole scene of what eight six seven eight minutes and um I, I don't know i feel like when 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 the character dies and when the act is on the floor i i just felt like 
and a dis dire need to just be still and not breathing. And, and, and I think, I think during the rehearsal process was really a completely different breath exercise to not move from my chest, but breathe from the back. And, and that took me like, I don't know, like maybe a week and a half just to master that. And to a point where I call people, it's like, hey, how come you're not breathing? How do you do that? I was like, oh, okay, yeah, success. I'll just keep that. <laughs> and I mean, it's one of those small things that I, I don't know. I just like stuck, stuck with, or, or I, 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 I help with pride to just, you know, just master that small bit of not breathing. And, but I mean, it took me a, quite a, it was quite a challenge. So it took me a while to, to do that. So that's one of them. When someone asks me, what's your memorable bit? I think that seems to be the, the thing for me. Um, but yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. I think um, for me, Sam is the kind of director who won't like, give you her two cents worth of what the character is and force you into that. So she's very open. She leaves you to make some discoveries for yourself, you know? And, and so th there wasn't all this sort of the piggies like this or piggies like that, just leave it open. And which is great, but it was quite panicky for me, actually. It was just like, I don't know whether I'm doing the right thing or not. And it's a very ensemble piece. So you're finding your place within as well, as well as trying to define your character, you know, and finding the hierarchy and the balance and all that. So it was very scary. And I remember that I, I didn't know the, quite a lot of my piggy lines, you know, some of the longer bits until very close to performance or getting it, getting it even only on performance, you know? So it was really scary for me. I mean, I really appreciated Sam's like way of doing it because it left it open for the actor to discover and to invent and to create. But it was really scary. And, but, you know, very satisfying at the end of the day. And I still kept on discovering I remember this one through the course of the performances so that there was some discovery that I did with uh, Crispian uh, sort of banging his chest and Piggy becoming the sort of silent doctor and all that. And, you know, wondering, first of all, how Crispian felt about it because I didn't warn him that he went with it. And then later Sam going, I really like that. Okay, well done. We'll keep that sort of like Piggy growing up, you know, and that sort of thing. So it was a very scary but satisfying process for me. You know. Thank you. Crispin, you want, you want to respond to that? <laughs> or figure um, it out? <laughs> I, I, no, actually, I don't remember that part, actually. <laughs> I, I remember it in Act 2, right? At the, right? Yeah, when you guys were separate. Yeah. Camps. I kind of gave you a physical examination that we had never done before. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. do remember the tapping part, but I didn't yeah, yeah. remember it done on me I felt I was when you said that I was trying to think oh wasn't that done on somebody else but yeah no it was on um, me <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um I mean for me I mean the, the biggest challenge was um probably just trying to get out the headspace of being an adult actor in that scene and being very conscious of the choices that I make as an actor as a character just kind of double checking myself um you know am I capturing you know, is it Crispian that's thinking that or is am I responding to somebody else as Crispian or am I responding as Percival and, and, and what would that difference be, if any? Sometimes it's not. I mean, in some ways, that's the whole point of The Lord of the Flies. It's not about the fact of trying to show the difference. It's about trying to show the similarities between these young boys and I would say some of our politicians right now, um, you know, um, finding those kind of, parallels and all that and um, um, I just remember that a lot was going you know I mean especially for Percival who's, who's meant to be a bit younger than the rest of everyone uh, was just trying to remember you know uh, just double self-checking whether it was uh, am I reacting genuinely to what people are doing as, as children or am I reacting as Crispian the adult who thinks that that's what a child should react I think that's what it is there's a parental kind of thing like am I acting as as if I think a children should act that way or my acting as a kid should act mm -hmm. that way and that's period. You know what I mean? That 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 kind of mentality of what should a child... Because that's the thing, that's, that's one of the big things about growing up as a child. You're, you're, you're playing with your own identity, but you're also trying to... Uh, you're also under that kind of discrimination that I or what an adult think a, a young person should be. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm juggling that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, if I might add to... Um, I think the, the physical physical work of the show is quite demanding. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's a lot of um, 
fight sequences and there's a lot of running around. There's a lot of um, levels to figure out. And um, uh, so I think just being, I, I remember being physically quite exhausted every time after the show um, and making sure that, you know, you don't injure yourself. Uh, the other challenge I had, I think, was because the fact that the audiences, the most of the audiences that we had coming in were students who were studying the show. Mm -hmm. So they knew, so it wasn't so much about retelling the story to them because they knew the story inside out. They knew exactly who the characters were. And I think they have, because of reading the novel and studying it, they know, they have a certain idea what uh, a Ralph would look like in their head, who their Ralph is, um, certain image or certain quality that they pick up from the reading, studying the novel. Uh, and I think I was worried that it's either it was going to alienate, alienate them too much if I were to play a, a, a Ralph that was too, maybe not in line with what they felt Ralph would be. And then they would, I felt like they might resist the play or they might resist the Ralph, my, my version of Ralph. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the solution I had with, because I remember thinking that that might be a problem. Uh, maybe one of the approaches I might had, uh, I might have done was to just, to just tell the story and uh, maybe in an effort to focus on that, then the Ralph, they will also sort of connect their Ralph and my Ralph. Um, but I remember sort of flagging that um, in my head during the performance, because it's quite early. I mean, the minute we had an audience, the minute uh, a character enters, you can hear the audience go like, ah, Biggie, 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 yeah. ah, that one, Sam and Eric. You know, like <laughs> they will whisper the names of characters. Because it's quite, quite, quite amazing to see characters come alive in front of them of characters that they've only read about. Yeah. Well, I mean, Sam and Eric, I mean, there was a very strong reaction to <laughs> <laughs> uh, That is uh, uh, Liam Sutton and uh, Gavin Yap. Yeah, yeah. Cut to those two boys again. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they had a very memorable scene too um, by the fire place or fire, yeah, by the, yeah. I remember that scene very well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I do all remember the, that, yeah. All the little the phones beast. came out and all like <laughs> suddenly you saw like little lights from, the, yeah. from the, 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 the girls in the audience and you're just like, are they watching the play? Or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, but that aside, I think, Sam, you putting Leon and G Gavin together was just... Perfect. They they just they, the chemistry the chemistry they had it was just so perfect. From the minute we we did it in rehearsal, just, we we were we it was it was hilarious. We, we had a great time watching. It was it. the Eurasian vibe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one and big was... one big challenge for um, a play like this is actually it happens in a very short amount of time. The play the duration is what was it, uh, Derek? An hour one forty. One hour forty minutes. Okay, one hour 40, that's okay, that's not so long, but a lot happens mm -hmm. in an hour 40. You go from, oh my gosh, this is wonderful, we're on holiday and we don't have parents, to death and blood sacrifice. and destruction and sacrifice and there's a beast and it's dark and we can't see. Um, what the, the, the hard part is getting there without feeling like you've dropped off a cliff. Do you know what I mean? Like, how did we finally get here? What, when, how did that happen? Um, and so, I mean, that, that for me was, was tough, but what was awesome is that because um, all the actors are inputting their own character journey, um, then you can sort of pull those elements together and go, okay, someone's peaked here. So that means this person can come up, this person can come up, but this one cannot come up because we're not there yet. So it felt like this really uh, challenging mind map that we had to, we knew where we started, we knew where we ended, but how we got there was, you know, I was discovering it along the way with everyone else, knowing where we needed to go and knowing where we couldn't go beyond. You know, sometimes you, you're just like, no, that's way too much. That just wouldn't happen. We're not, we're not emotionally there yet, that kind of thing. So it felt, um, it felt like, uh, I, guess, I don't know, I guess, I guess cooking where you're sort of like a bit too much of, let's put more of that, let's, you know, let, better balance that out um, or mm. something. Mm. A very difficult play, but exciting, like super, super charged and exciting. I, I enjoy too being able to have 
the novel as a point of reference because I think the adaptation of course couldn't couldn't include everything and I think in in bridging all that gaps in between these moments we had the resource of the novel so I, I remember going to Sam quite a fair bit and be like well here from from A to B I don't know how to get here in the novel it's this but it's not in the play how you know I think that was it was a nice um, uh, collaboration to have with William Golding <laughs> and everyone was scared you know like it, it everyone I mean I was petrified um, but everyone had their own moments of uncertainty, which I guess is really, you know, that's the backbone of this play in many ways. Um, but I, you know, I think I had, I had uh, one-to-one sessions with every single actor who was going through their own challenge because if you just talk about the character and just say, okay, who is this character? What's their history? What, but then you plonk them in an island and they're completely out of their comfort zone. So we're negotiating not just the character that's provided on, on the stage, but the circumstance that has made them change. It's, I mean, kudos to all the actors because they really had to look at so many complexities of the character, which wasn't a, a nurture thing. It was a full on nature thing, literally. Mm. Mm. And, and, and on the producing front, it is also, I dare say, the most challenging play production that I had to put together. But, you know, I think I'm so, we're, we're really happy that, you know, we, we managed to, to, to pull it off and so beautifully. And, and, and when you guys watch the, the screening on, on the, when we screen it, you will, I, I'm sure you will bring back a lot of memories. What um, was so challenging for you, Derek? What was, so, what was the biggest challenge for you as a producer? <laughs> Where do we begin? <laughs> the, the, the leaves from China, or <laughs> so, so, so the leaves from China, right? Only was stuck in customs, and you know we we we, oh, yeah. yeah. So 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 it came very last minute. Let's just say the mm. blood also was stuck in customs, and it was the first time. As I was just sharing yesterday with with the, the designers, the chat with the designers. A lot of times, um, we we are able to build the set beforehand and then bring it into theatre. This is the only time that we did not have a built-up set at all pre-production because we literally have to, to do floral arrangements in the theatre. So it was, it was, I was scared too because I was like looking at like there's nothing and we just have to you know put together but of course with the brilliance of you know all our design team and you know our entire crew and our volunteers and we had like 30 volunteers on rotation you know mm -hmm. all, during the entire bumping just to, to 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 fix the leaves and everything else and we were just talking about it yesterday it was so hilarious there were two teams of people one um, um doing the floral arrangement the other doing gardening work and cutting down leaves so that james lights can come through the the, the whole forest <laughs> So yeah, so I mean that was that was memorable for me, um, and and of course we re we 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 remember very 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 memorable uh, this very memorable moment where uh, we almost was was going was not able Lian was not able to perform the last few productions yeah <laughs> because of these yeah, issues and stuff. So yes, I was yeah. kept busy throughout the entire run. Oh yes, you remember. Oh, yeah, he now might I do. not be able to get mm -hmm. a visa or access into Singapore. Like we were just, yeah. So scary. That and the was, reveal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the reveal of when we found out that he yeah. was did, going to be able. He how was did I do that? How did I do that? You, oh, we had we had a rehearsal. Yeah, the yes. day before. <laughs> Okay. With, uh, with a replacement actor, and yes. then the following day we had we were called in early to run the scenes with him on stage, and uh, and there was one scene when uh, the actor was supposed to Leah's character was supposed to appear, and then the actor who was replacing him didn't quite make the entrance, so we were like, okay, that's his cue; he's not coming in yet. And then everybody was starting to get a bit agitated, I think. And then out from the bushes comes <laughs> Wan Lee and Satin yeah. and Bright behind him. 
fresh from uh, woodlands. But, but actually, actually, it was Percival's entrance through the the, the little. Oh, that's right. That's right. And Christian was running towards it. I said, "No, no, Christian, just stay here." It's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you know, it, we 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 knew we heard. About, I think we just just I think we we knew about it in the morning. I think Sam, and then yeah. Sam was like, "Yeah, let's let's." But we already planned for. The <laughs> Let's just go ahead and let's just surprise everybody. So that was that was fun. But uh, after all that, <laughs> there's a video I'm sure somewhere of that. Yeah, yeah. sure. I think Jasmine, our stage manager, had a video or something. Oh really? I, I cannot remember. Oh, you know, it was so long. We have, we have to check with her. You know, I think Gavin was most excited. Yeah. Was he? Yeah, I think yeah, Gavin went and gave him a hug or something. I oh. <laughs> So I've come to actually, I, I'm done with my questions. Did anyone else would like to, uh, you know, add anything else or say anything else? Before we I just want to add, just in terms of the previous question about the idea of, um, the ensemble was quite organic, I feel. No two shows are, were ever the same. Um, I, I think Sue was right that we, we were constantly sort of like bouncing off of each other. Um, you know, some days uh, Mark will, will have a certain sp- spring in his step that's just kind of would agitate Ralph a little bit more and then I will be like a bit more just antagonistic and uh, sometimes uh, you know Rizman will just channel his inner inner life a bit more and then it just kind of like like drives everybody's um, um, stakes a little higher so I think it it was a it was a great open ensemble and then we were always constantly responding uh, and reacting to each other Um, so, so that was that was nice that was quite a memorable part of the show. Yeah, that was amazing. Mm. And the costumes, everyone had their own like unique yeah. way of wearing their costume. I remember when, you know, it was like, am I gonna have one part tucked out or one part tucked <laughs> I think my tie is gonna be a bit more like this. And then, and then uh, Sue just fell in love with this sweater, yeah. you know, and he's like, yes, this is my team. I'm wearing my sweater. Um, pick ye, right? Yeah, pick ye. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Pick ye. Well, it's all coming back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was great. <laughs> and we laughed a lot, I think. Yeah. I mean, there were just so many. Oh, yeah. yeah you, if, if you didn't laugh, you'd just, gosh, I don't know what would happen to us. It was so full on. Yeah. <laughs> it was. And it's like every day before the show started, too, I think all of us would be out in the um, on on stage, and then people are stretching and warming up, and there's always a game that we were playing. I can't remember what it was. Oh, yeah. it got, yeah. The rugby, the rugby game. Yeah. Right? Passing the conch, yes. Yeah. Was yeah. it? It got sometimes it got very competitive, so it was it kind of a nice. Very competitive. It was nice because it, it it allowed everybody to kind of like warm up and and um because everybody kind of like you know had different jobs, different work. Somebody was studying and like had a full time job, so it was nice. Everybody kind of reset. Um, and like, okay, we're doing the show. This is the this is the level we're, we're pitching it tonight. Yeah, yeah. Get right into it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. So, Except Dale, who always came late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Dale, I, Dale was like the MVP when it came to roles. I mean, that guy just rocks up at interval. <laughs> students work from school and then he just comes on for that scene. Yeah, he just went <laughs> down the road, right? From La Salle down to Sota. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so that's that's Lord of the Flies. I, I just want to say that, you know, it's it's really an honor and privilege to be able to produce this show and to be able to work with, you know, all of you and everyone else who's involved in it because I think it's a we're just looking through the credits the other day and the program and we're like, wow, there was at, there must be at least forty to fifty people involved, including all the the, 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 the solar crew, our volunteers, and, and everyone else. So, you know, it was, it's really a beast to stage. And, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, every day, I think it is a challenging, it's a, it, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a challenge for, 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 for me at least. So, you know, I, I, I'm just so grateful that, that we, we, we all stuck together and was able to pull off this beautiful, beautiful show. And I think more importantly that we were able to really reach out to a lot more of the new and young audiences and, and be able to, like what you guys say, see their characters and their text come to life. And I think that's, you know, really a, 
a, a, a honor and privilege to be able to do that. So with that, we have now come to the end of our chat, but uh, you know, uh, we are premiering Lord of the Flies, our 2016 hit production, which won Best Set Design by Mr. Wong Chi Wai at the 2017 Live Theatre Awards on the 29th of May, 8 p.m. at Sightlines Entertainment YouTube channel, which you will begin to see the, uh, the, the link and all of the information at the description below this video. So do check it out, subscribe to the channel, and set your reminders so you'll be notified of the premiere. With that, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to seeing you guys live on 29th of May. Yay! Woo.